Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, November 26, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I've got a quick diary today from Xavier about DNS over HTTPS again, but this time a little bit of a different spin on it as to how to sort of get a good balance between privacy and network monitoring. What you're usually concerned about with DNS over HTTPS is, for example, your ISP altering DNS data or using it, for example, for commercial purposes. Now, what Xavier here is proposing is that you pretty much keep traditional DNS working inside your network but then your internal resolver is using DNS over HTTPS to connect to a trusted DNS over HTTPS endpoint. In Xavier's case, he picked Cloudflare. And then he also uses good old Pi-hole in order to do some filtering with reverse policy zones on what users are able to resolve. So the internal resolver still gets all the network monitoring data that you need, but your ISP is no longer able to interfere with your DNS traffic. And talking about privacy, security company SecConsult did publish details regarding a vulnerability that Fortinet fixed last week. Fortinet, like many similar products, is sending, for example, URLs that a user is browsing to and host names and the like back to its own systems in order to check if they are on any blacklists. Now, this information is, of course, sensitive and should be encrypted. They could have done something like TLS, but instead they went apparently for their own encryption scheme, which meant that they would just XOR the data using a static key. Now, XOR is not necessarily bad if you are using a very random key, often used with one-time pads and not a bad system in this case, but using the same key over and over, of course, that doesn't work. Once the attacker, for example, can guess a certain URL that you're visiting, they can easily then derive the key. And in this case, it appears that the key was actually derived from the serial number, so it may not be that terribly difficult to outright guess the key and with that inspect all traffic being sent to Fortinet, which includes essentially every HTTP URL that the user visits. A lot of similar systems like, for example, Google Safe Browsing do not send full URLs. Instead, they're sending hashes of URLs. In that case, even the recipient uh, like Google Safe Browsing does not know which URL you're visiting unless it is listed in their system. Well, and then we have actually another story that deals with privacy and that's some newer tracking technique that apparently is being implemented by tracking provider Eulerian, in particular at French speaking websites at this point. Now, what they're essentially doing here is that they're using DNS to track users. When you visit a website, there are links being embedded to a unique host name and then this host name is being used to follow you around. Current tracking blockers apparently aren't quite up to this particular method yet, so they're not blocking it. You block origin, which is the tracker where this was sort of first reported, apparently has implemented a countermeasure now. Now, going back to the first story I talked about, Pi-hole, it can be used to actually just block the respective domains. So that would be a way to avoid this particular tracker without having to install any additional browser software. Well, and that's it for today. Thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Remember, tomorrow will be the last podcast for this week due to the Thanksgiving holiday.